Welcome to The Woman's Connection. I'm Barry Louise Switzen, your moderator. The Woman's Connection is a program about events shaping women's lives and helping one gain authentic power on a personal or a professional level. So won't you stay tuned? Welcome. Throughout history, women have always been given the short shift in whatever we do. To rectify this in Wikipedia, there is an organization called Art and Feminism that is going to change the way things are done. And I would like to welcome Jacqueline Maybe, who is one of the founders. Jacqueline, welcome. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. I'm glad to. Now, let's just start at the beginning. You're an artist. No. Oh, you're not <laughs> an artist. No, I'm not an artist. Okay, then how did you get involved in creating this art and feminism organization? Mm -hmm. um, my background is in art history, uh, and I currently work independently as a curator, uh, and I also do some arts communications. Um, but how I got involved was a friend of mine, Sean Evans, is an art librarian, and she's uh, art librarians um, of North America Association. They have special interest groups, and she's in the one that um, is about women in art. Um, so she was mentioning we were talking about ideas, you know, what she could do with the group, and she mentioned that she was interested in perhaps doing a Wikipedia edit-a-thon. Um, then I went home and mentioned this to uh, one of the other co-organizers, Michael Mandeberg, who was my partner. Uh, and I mentioned it to Michael because he's used Wikipedia in his teaching. He is an artist and a professor at CUNY. Um, and so then he mentioned that he had been having the exact same conversation um, with another woman, Laurel Patak, who is a curator. And she's doing a fellowship at iBeam, which is an art and technology center. Uh, and he was encouraging Laurel to do a sort of, you know, Wikipedia edit sprint around art and technology and feminism. Um, so we decided since two conversations were happening simultaneously, we should probably do something about it. <laughs> so how did you start with the name Art and Feminism? How did that come about? Um, I think it just emerged from partly what our individual interests are. Uh, we're all involved with the art somehow. We're all feminists. Uh, but I think it was also specifically important for Sean and her involvement in this special interest group as part of um, ARLIS, the Art Librarians Association, uh, to have women in art somehow involved in the name. Um, so we just said art and feminism. That's simple enough. I love your tagline, try again, fail again, <laughs> fail better. How did you come up with this tagline? Uh, that's the uh, that's the tagline for my independent practice, uh, and it's from Samuel Beckett, wor Worst Word Ho, one of his shorter short stories. Uh, and yeah, that's I, I took it from there. I just think that uh, failure is fundamentally a part of art making. Uh, I don't think there would be art without failure, um, and fundamentally a part of the process of learning um, is doing things wrong and then learning from doing things wrong. Let's start at the beginning on this. Okay. What is the criteria to get involved in the Wikipedia um, edit-a-thon? Edit edit-a-thon. Okay. What is it? Uh, there's really no criteria. If you are interested, uh, then anyone can edit. That's sort of the tagline of Wikipedia, anyone can edit. That's, you know, the be bold, anyone can edit. Um, we, the way that we got participants uh, was that once we had confirmed that we were doing this single event, like a single edit-a-thon at iBeam in New York City, uh, we sent it out to our various communities and networks. Uh, and it just went viral. Um, it was heartening and beyond what any of us expected. Uh, but I guess, you know, it's, it's, it's also comforting to know that you're not the only one with an interest in <laughs> writing some wrongs. <laughs> well, let me ask, okay, how do you figure out who should be involved to write? Mm -hmm. And I've got multiple questions, so we'll just, and how do you select the names of the women to be included? Well, the way that we, I'll do the second question first, the way that we selected uh, the women to be included um, or suggested uh, that, you know, we had a list of like, we suggest that you would work on these, these people, these entries in Wikipedia, uh, was partly there are other um, 
lists already started within Wikipedia, like people already working on, you know, even just listing absences, like why isn't this artist here? Why, is the, why isn't this other artist there? Um, so it was partly, you know, culling from those lists. Uh, we also asked people when we emailed our uh, colleagues and friends if there was anyone they encountered in their research who was missing or who had a shoddy entry. Uh, so we sort of crowdsourced it that way. But we also intended these satellite events to be fairly autonomous. Uh, we weren't going to tell people explicitly what they should or shouldn't do. Uh, and more, they were organized around the holdings of like, a lot of them happened out of libraries. So it was sort of, you know, what are your specific holdings? What is your art school's area of interest? Um, we sort of let people's interests guide what they edited and what they did. Um, and it was really open to all. Um, I think that was another wonderful thing about the event at iBeam was that, um, well, we ran out of chairs at one point. <laughs> Over 150 people showed up, which was wonderful, um, but they weren't all art world people. Uh, there was, you know, the age ranges from small children to senior citizens. There wasn't just all females. Um, it was, you know, all races were <laughs> represented. Uh, so it was, you know, we, we just sort of put it out there and whoever came and participated, that was great. We didn't really set any bar barriers to entry. One of the things that bothers me is that anybody can go in and edit anything. Mm -hmm. How do you prevent something malicious being put into the system? And who monitors it? Um, well, it's, you have to think about Wikipedia, it's as much as it is uh, an information resource uh, as it is a social network. So they have um, what they call talk pages and each entry or article has a talk page and that's where people work out these issues. There are very clear protocols um, about abuse and the way that you're supposed to interact with other people who are editing. Um, but it still does happen, for instance, uh, myself and Sean, uh, uh, Evans, the co one of the co-organizers, during the event, we were, you know, very busy facilitating uh, and helping people, you know, do tutorials and and so forth. But we we wanted to make at least one change. <laughs> uh, so our goal, or what we ended up doing, was uh, for the entry for Hannah Hach, the German Dada artist. There was a line that we felt uh, was leading and inappropriate, uh, which was. Uh, Hawk was a noted feminist, semicolon, she had several abortions. <laughs> so we uh, removed that sentence from her entry <laughs> as our action. <laughs> so it's not perfect. It's a, like, it's a matter of self-surveillance, the communi community of people editing who uh, sort of go through and make sure that things are generally neutral in tone. Um, but of course, you know, abuse still does happen. And that's why I think it's important to have, you know, a number, people coming from a, a wide variety of positions editing it. Because maybe that sentence about Hannah Hawk to a, a, a man or just, you know, a non-feminist man or, or non-feminist woman uh, seemed appropriate when it's not. How do you organize this? I noticed in your website not your website, but the links you had sent me. Mm -hmm. There was many different groups around the country. Mm -hmm. Can somebody just do it at home, or do they have to be in a group? Or, you know, I've got five minutes here, I'll start writing something. Can that be done? Yes, certainly. Um, you know, the idea of meeting together to do this is more about getting people used to the interface because it is a little different. Um, it's not a what you see is what you get editor. Uh, so learning like sort of the basic Wikipedia code can be tricky. Um, and it's just getting people comfortable with the interface. But of course, anyone can, you know, go online and edit it um, at any time if they want. And I think our part of our goal really is to get people comfortable with the interface. So you know, we're not looking for people to become full-time editors because there are people who just, this is their entire social life is editing Wikipedia. We're not asking that. Um, I think it's just more the knowledge that you can participate and you can change the interface and its content. You know, you said the group that you had at ISOR here mm -hmm. was from the small to the seniors. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I was just thinking while you said that, I think that would be a great thing to start because so many seniors are looking for something to do. It's like branching out and going to all these senior 
organizations mm -hmm. and say we need people and there's so much resource that's being untapped and that was just one thought I think it's a great idea <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that bothers me is that anybody can go in and edit you also said that it's not a good idea to do your own bio mm -hmm. I realize that I'm not objective about myself <laughs> but why not rules or the the best practices the guidelines for Wikipedia um, are that you're not supposed to write about yourself because we have biases about ourselves um, I mean if you go in and your username isn't identify doesn't identify you as you you could go in and edit your entry it's just more about like you know, Wikipedia runs on like the golden rule or the honor system. Um, so it's sh more just uh, a set of practices that has evolved to try and make it still the most, uh, still a useful resource. Because, you know, there are many instances where, say for instance, a movie's coming out. So their PR company just copy and paste uh, their press release into Wikipedia, which that's about promoting them. It's not about, you know, maintaining a useful, uh, uh, resource for the commons. How many bios did you start with and how many do you have now? Um, well, during the day, I know that at least uh, 101 new articles were created uh, and I believe over 90 were edited. Uh, and these are imperfect uh, stats, um, you know, because it's a volunteer effort we strongly encouraged everyone in the satellites to record all the work they did during the day but that didn't necessarily happen um, so to the best of our knowledge that's that's what happened during just that event now how often do you have a write-a-thon <laughs> um, well I know that Sean uh, Michael uh, Laurel Patak and myself will be probably organizing another one maybe in the fall um, but again we don't you know people did Wikipedia meetups before we started our art and feminism themed one. Uh, we don't own the idea and moreover we don't want to be in sole control of it. <laughs> um, so for instance I know the women, um, what is it, Museum of Women in the Arts in DC uh, is having a edit-a-thon uh, at the end of this month uh, or in Toronto where they had an art and feminism satellite sprint. They've started making them a monthly occurrence as well. Um, I know a small uh, small gallery in Brooklyn um, is also having uh, weekly edit-a-thons on Sundays uh, where they like gather and have food and then you know they they edit entries. Um, so they're they're it's become a truly kind of rhizomic uh, or viral uh, event. Um, I keep hearing about, you know, we have Google alerts set up for art and feminism, uh, and we keep hearing about them happening in far-flung places, and that's, we think that's wonderful. You also have a hashtag. Yes, we have a hashtag. <laughs> Which is? Uh, the hashtag is art and feminism. Um, so that also allows us to track, um, you know, the, the different, um, gatherings happening all over the world but also just when people do their own individual edits sometimes you know we've encouraged people to tweet about it or post about it on social media and that's an easy way to track it. Can you tell us more about the background of Wi Wikipedia? <laughs> I hope this is so funny. <laughs> Emerged I mean as far as feminism and you know did they ever say why there's more men than women? But we all know the answer to that. So it emerged uh, from, there's two major things that uh, was the impetus for us starting this. Uh, one is that Wiki Wikipedia has a well-known gender disparity, uh, that only 13% of uh, the editors are identified as female. Um, and, you know, there's speculation why this is. Uh, some people say it's because of um, uh, leisure disparity that generally women have less free time than men um, because we are more likely to work outside the home and then have to come home and work inside the home again. <laughs> um, also because of you know gender socialization and comportment we generally don't raise women to take up space and declare the things that they know. Um, also because the talk pages on Wikipedia can be um, a bit trollish or that people can be brusque uh, so these are different reasons why people have speculated that women don't participate as much on Wikipedia. 
Um, but it has a very clear uh, result, which is there are noticeable gaps in the content of Wikipedia because you don't have as many women editing. The famous example that they give, which I actually find a bit irksome, is that um, one uh, character from a violent video game uh, has his entry has over 500 citations, uh, and yet the entries for Sex in the City and Friendship bracelets are quite short. <laughs> so this is where people give an, a, an example of you know the lack of female participation. Um, so it was partly you know that was something we all knew about, um, and it had been in the back of our minds, um, but it was also shortly, I'd say like six months before um, October 2013 is when we first started talking about this. Um, six months before then, uh, there was a controversy about American women novelists, uh, which was someone on Wikipedia, an editor was trying to separate female writers out from uh, uh, American novelists. So American novelists thereby default would just be men, whereas women, he was trying to sh suggest that women get their own special, like, separate category. Uh, so this uh, caused a bit of a sensation on Wikipedia and then as well, like, the New York Times wrote about it and the Salon wrote about it and the New York Review of Books. Um, and, you know, I noticed, and, and Michael Mandelberg noticed, uh, that people were talking about it a lot on social media, but those same people weren't going to Wikipedia and talking about it on the talk page there. Uh, and we sort of realized that there is this disconnect. Uh, and you know, we, we started encouraging like on our various social media friends who made a comment about it. It's like, well, you can go here and change it. You can participate in that conversation. Um, so I know that was sort of like the two major impetus for making it happen. Anybody, I think that probably the disconnect is that people don't realize or didn't realize that they could go on and do the editing themselves. Certainly. And I think, um, you know, in my conversations in the lead up to the, the event happening, uh, especially I was so surprised for instance, I'd be speaking with librarians, and these are women with double master's degrees. Um, you know, they have a master's in a subject area and then a master's in um, librarian science. And they would ask me, oh, are you sure that I'm able to edit? And it, it, it just was so frustrating because, you know, the 19-year-old the boy and his sense of entitlement never questions if he should be editing something or not. Um, <laughs> you know, these are literally experts in their field. Not only experts in their field, but people who understand the process of writing for encyclopedias better than anybody else. Um, so it was, I think, just as you say, one of the most exciting things about uh, the whole, the whole art and feminism Wikipedia edit-a-thons was making people realize that anyone could do this. When you said, it sounds like there's you're at the beginning of a movement here <laughs> and a lot of people like I said don't realize, realize that they can go in themselves and do some editing. Mm -hmm. Great. What I was going to say just escaped me. Hold on a minute. Oh. Why it's concentrating on art and feminism. Mm -hmm. What about people who've done other things like inventor women have invented millions of things mm -hmm. that are not given credit for can they put their self up there also or is it just limited um, yes they're actually um, in the lead up to uh, what we did other people have started doing edit-a-thons around women in STEM which is uh, like science technology uh, engineering and medicine um, and so there's a day, Ada Lovelace Day. Ada Lovelace was one of the like first originators or like creators of the computer. Um, so there is definitely a movement, uh, defined movement within the sciences um, to add content on Wikipedia about women technologists. Um, and during our event, you know, we called it it's about art and feminism. It's partly based off our own interests, but it's also around the gaps that exist in content on Wikipedia. It's not a great source for the arts yet. <laughs> it's not a great resource. Um, so, you know, I can speak for myself when I say that my participation was bothly, both as, you know, a feminist, but it was also as an art historian. It's, you know, I spent 10 years in post-secondary education studying art history, and I feel my intense privilege of that. Uh, and so I felt it's important to give that back to the comments and to share that, the specific knowledge I have. Um, 
but during the event as well, you know, we had friends come who are not in the arts. Uh, you know, so I had a friend write about um, gender. Um, she's doing her PhD in economics at um, the New School, and so she was writing about gender pay gap. And another friend is doing her PhD in Italian studies, and she wrote about uh, an, a, a female Italian poet. Um, and you know. It was just about, you're feminist, you're doing something here, that counts. <laughs> we encourage any kind of participation. Write about plate spinning, we don't care. <laughs> just get on there and do something. You say you have the, uh, the write-a-thons to explain. Have you done a video to explain it so that you can disseminate it worldwide? We did. We haven't done a video. Um, there are other, um, though we did link to a number of different videos that people have done, um, sort of explaining an intro to Wikipedia and like basic editing and best practices. Um, and so those resources do exist. Um, I think with the, the meeting in person, part of the reason that it's important is, you know, we're all different kinds of learners. Um, and some people can just read something like off a screen and then know how to do it. Um, but for other people, it's important to have that kind of like occupying physical tactile space and learning. And there's also a pleasure in like doing that kind of work and learning together. Um, and also I think important, so we um, had Wikipedia NYC, which is a group of uh, Wikipedians. Uh, they meet and they have events together. We got them involved and it was really helpful to meet, uh, to match people who have maybe subject area ex uh, expertise, like myself, uh, with someone who's a more experienced editor. Um, you know, I think we have to not underestimate within Wikipedia and its established community that there's desire for change, but a lot of people just don't know where to begin. Um, so it's sort of, you know, matching Wikipedians and feminists, <laughs> and we all learn together. <laughs> I think it's phenomenal because Wikipedia has gotten a bad rap. I mean, the man who started it got a real bad rap. Now, I don't know if he deserved it or not. But that's what I remember about mm -hmm. Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. So when I was introduced to art and feminism doing this whole project, it was like, wow, that's really terrific. Who supports it? Who pays for the bandwidth? Who, mm -hmm. Where does the money come from to support it? Um, right now, from us. <laughs> um, we, when we had the event at iBeam, uh, they sponsored it and provided a small budget we had so we could have food and, you know, um, do a little press, that kind of thing. Um, so at the moment, it's just under our own steam, um, but we're thinking for, you know, next specific events of like reaching out to certain entities to get funding um, or even, you know, in-kind things of using someone's space to have an event. Um, but right now, it's all kind of volunteer. Who pays for the space, the bandwidth mm -hmm. on Wikipedia? I mean, where does that oh, funding come that's, from? that's um, the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, so Wikipedia itself uh, essentially is, uh, the content is created entirely through volunteer contributions. So you going on and adding an article. Uh, but the Wikimedia Foundation is a nonprofit that has a few employees. Those are people who write the code to update the interface. Um, you know, the, the guy who started it, a few other people. Um, but, and that is, uh, as it is a nonprofit, people pay for it by donations. Like sometimes, I don't know if you've gone on Wikipedia and you see that they have like a funding drive uh, in the header on the top of the screen. So it's all donation. Oh, good. No, I haven't gone on Wikipedia <laughs> to research this whole show. No. Yeah. So <laughs> I didn't know. That's very interesting because there's a lot of women's organizations as well as get this I keep going back to the seniors because I know mm -hmm. so many senior women who are so brilliant mm -hmm. and have nothing to do so I think no I think that's a wonderful idea and I think the reason that we were successful um, we think uh, that arguably it was the largest Wikipedia edit-a-thon meetup like in history uh, and as I said, there are Wikimedia chapters or Wikipedia chapters for different cities, and they get together. For instance, you know, I know that the Queen's Library had a Wikipedia edit-a-thon around Queen's history. Uh, and so people came and they added things about the history of Queen's to Wikipedia. Um, I think that they only ever advertise within their own circle, you know? So when there's a meetup, for example, Queen's History, they just pass it amongst themselves. But we reached out to other people, and, you know, it was there, there was a great desire to participate, but 
that maybe a hesitancy about how how and where to start. Um, so I think you're right. Maybe I'll suggest that to some Wikipedians I know that they <laughs> reach out. <laughs> how do you start a write-a-thon mm -hmm. in your community? Um, if you go on Wikipedia, um, we have created uh, a sort of infrastructure where we describe, you know, the steps we took to organize one so that other people can just organize one as well. Um, but if you go on Wikipedia and search for meetups, there's usually uh, a description for, you know, what makes a good meetup. Food helps, coffee. <laughs> if you're going to be there for, you know, six or four to six hours, <laughs> you need refreshments. Um, and, you know, how to reach out to a local Wikipedian who can help you learn how to use the interface and suggest, you know, the best way to create articles. So um, it's all online. You can also reach out to us. Um, we have uh, a Tumblr site that has all this information as well. And we've started mailing lists for people who are interested in starting, um, basically just trying to share the knowledge that we have. Jacqueline, in the closing moments of the show, what would you like to leave the audience with? Uh, I would like to leave the audience with the knowledge that anyone can edit, and they should be bold. Uh, so if you want to see change reflected in Wikipedia, you have to make the change. Jacqueline, thank you so much for joining us today. I just hope that everybody gets online and makes one contribution. That would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. I look forward to hearing from you and your contribution to Wikipedia. So write us here at the Women's Connection and let us know. Bye now. <laughs>